Hello and welcome to Comic Culture. I'm Terrence Dollard, a professor in the Department of Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Pembroke. My guests today are podcasters Nick Ramirez and Kyle Romero. Gentlemen, welcome to Comic Culture. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks, Terrence. Let's talk about the Meatcast. It's it's one of my favorite podcasts, and it has a very unique focus. So, can you tell us a little bit about where the idea came for focusing a podcast on the brilliance of Heathcliff? Well, I, I used to host a podcast right when the pandemic started. I was trying to find fun stuff to do. I used to do live comedy in New York, and it was all shut down. So, I wanted to start a podcast, and uh, the first thing that came to mind was doing a daily podcast once a day about one comic strip every day. And uh, my first choice was Heathcliff, but my friend that I decided to do it with, uh, Lance, he said, no, let's do Garfield instead. So that lasted for a couple of years, a daily Garfield podcast, and until uh, he had a baby and had to stop. So I was finally freed from Garfield, <laughs> and I was able to ask Kyle if he could sort of take Lance's place and do do a podcast with me about Heathcliff, the other orange cat. The original. The better. The original. The, the, the original, original orange cat. The original and better. The Hydrox to um, Garfield's <laughs> Oreo. <laughs> exactly. That's, right. That's exactly right. A podcast a day is a big commitment. A podcast a week is still a big commitment. So you get this idea, you bring in your pal to help you with this uh, this concept. So how does it evolve from just being, let's talk about a comic strip to being one where you kind of focus on the absurdity and the, I guess, the, the weirdness that is Heathcliff and kind of lean into that? To be frank, Nick and I don't really do a ton of planning. I don't know if that comes across in the podcast itself, but we, we're both improvisers as we spend the majority of our time doing that. I mean, at least I do, but uh, so I think we're comfortable with sort of just let's look at the week's Heathcliffs, let's have a guest on and let's just see what that conversation becomes. Um, we do like our, our segments, uh, but, you know, sometimes it doesn't come and you just see what happens in the moment. So, yeah, in, ter in terms of actually executing on the plan of let's do a podcast about Heathcliff, it really was just let's just start recording and see what it is. <laughs> yeah. Did we have anything planned out that first episode we recorded kyle or do we just like i don't think so i the... think i can't even remember if you had sound drops planned in the first episode you must have like at least the this week on heathcliff and but but i, I think all we really knew was we will look at we'll look at the week's heathcliffs and talk about them that was the full extent of the planning that we did i remember we both said it's got to be less than 30 minutes an episode because <laughs> There's no way we can make a podcast longer than 30 minutes <laughs> where all we do is talk about this, the six or seven Heathcliff comic strips that came out that week. Yeah, but yeah we did it, say that, but Mission Creep uh, settled in and we ended up, we're about an hour at least. At least, yeah, at least an hour. Some, some of them get like, I think we've done like 90 minute episodes when we're really yeah. feeling it. Yeah, sometimes we're, sometimes we're cooking and you just, <laughs> you can't shut it off, you know? Well, it's, it's funny because I, t I, use this uh, podcast, the Meatcast, as my ride into work. It just, it's my, my zen <laughs> moment before chaos sets in. Um, and one thing I do really love, those drops that you talked about, Nick, you, you have what I would like to say is the voice of an angel. Uh, oh, thank you. And, and <laughs> the fact that you, you've done so many great uh, songs, uh, the one I'm thinking, of course, is the, um, uh, the, the letters. Uh, do you want to read a letter or an email? <laughs> and then, of course, no, the drop right. corner. Kyle's, uh, uh, what is it? Kyle's uh, recap? Kyle's, no. Kyle's punch-up punch corner, corner yeah. which, um, you know, Nick did the vocals for the song on my segment, which I am perfectly happy. There's no resentment at all there. Um, and then, yeah, the, the <laughs> we haven't done the the letter, the, the Beatles song uh, one in a yeah, while. Yeah, what was it? It was, was do, you, <laughs> do you oh, want to know a secret? Yeah. And I would remember laughing because I was like, Nick, there's there's Beatles song. There's like, please, Mr. Postman. Yeah, there are Beatles songs that you could have chosen that are more related. No. Do you want to know a secret for our? Uh, yeah, we made it like, do you want to get a letter or something like that? Or do you, do you want, want to read a letter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Typical Meatcast fashion. It was incredibly sweaty and. Uh, <laughs> 
doesn't really make sense, but we're having a good time, you know? Is what we're saying, is any of this making sense to people that are listening to watching this? Like, do you, do you understand what we do is we say, I take a karaoke track and sing uh, parody lyrics that are related to our podcast, I guess, a few a few times a, a month. I guess that, that sums it up. You know, I, I understand it. And that's really, I guess, all that matters. Um, <laughs> but it, it's it's a fun podcast because it is it's it's comedians talking about a comic strip, and it's not in the way that um, I don't want to throw shade at my my good friend uh, Josh, the comics curmudgeon, but he tends to get a little bit edgy and and sometimes a little mean spirited about stuff in in a you know funny comic strip kind of way. But you are, it seems like you're genuine fans of Heathcliff and all of the weirdness that Peter Gallagher comes up with. Sometimes you're just, you're as stunned as we are. Other times you, you kind of just talk about the characters, but you clearly love the strip. As you're looking at that week's strip, and, and, and I guess you're kind of seeing it on the fly, you know, are you as taken back by it and just kind of still enjoying it, even though it's been over a year of Heathcliff meet casts? We, I think no. we both end up seeing the comic strips before the podcast anyway, so it, it would be nice if we did get like uh, our genuine reactions uh, recorded on those podcasts, but I, it's kind of inescapable these Heathcliff comic strips. I don't, for me at least, I don't. And I don't know. That's probably not a universal experience. Yeah, I think we've sufficiently engineered the algorithm that uh, Nick and I will will see the Heathcliffs uh, no matter what, wherever whatever website we're on. Um, but yeah, I think speaking for me, like I, yeah, it it I still every every week there's at least one comic that I'm completely i'm chuckling at even if i've seen it before it's it really there's these are i'm genuinely struck by how funny it is it actually makes me laugh you know yeah they are Which funny. Is really it's it's a joy to be able to do that it would really suck if we had decided to do this podcast and then we started to not enjoy heathcliff because we're making Sorry. all this money and <laughs> we wouldn't be able to walk away you know? how did you find heathcliff terrence growing up in new york uh we used to have two newspapers that would come to the house we had the Long Island's Newsday, and we would have the Daily News. And the Daily News had Heathcliff. And on Sundays, obviously, it was in color. And uh, being uh, just uh, the family loved the Sunday comics. We would fight over who got to read which ones first. And uh, the Daily News, we'd go through there. And, you know, you just kind of get into the character. And then they, there was the animated show, uh, which I was a little too old for. But, you know, homework or an orange cat on adventures with the voice of Mel Blanc. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the orange cat and... <laughs> askew homework and it worked out pretty well for me um, and you know I kind of lost Heathcliff along the way uh, and a friend of mine yeah, said yeah, have too. you read Heathcliff lately and I said well, no and he said well you got to check this out and then he sent me something and it was one of the early Jimmy strips and um, I'm like oh, hold wow. on a second wait I believe I'm having an epiphany I mean it was the flame <laughs> above the head type of thing and after that I, I've just been enjoying every day <laughs> of Heathcliff. So that was just like within the last year or two, right? Yes. Did I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say that. Okay. No, you shouldn't be that we, we're happy. <laughs> any, however, anyone comes into the fold, you're welcome. Welcome I mean, to I the was, flock. I was aware of the, the garbage ape because of, uh, you know, yeah. reading the, the comic curmudgeon website, but, uh, right. like I was saying about the, the comic curmudgeon, he tends to get a little bit, um, like he's picking on the comics, especially let's say Mary Worth when Wilbur's in it. But you guys seem again, you're genuine fans. So are you ever tempted to just think to you know to say uh, this one's a this one's a terrible strip. Uh, let's just make fun of it. Or are you always kind of just thinking, well, it's fun. I'm just gonna have fun with it anyway. I think for me, like I, I mean, I that just doesn't seem fun to me. Like that wouldn't be as fun to do the podcast if the premise of the podcast, or even if it was just like. Maybe, actually, it might be kind of fun to do like roast week where we just like one episode we're just really unnecessarily mean about the strips. But but no, I, I genuinely enjoy them. I also think like it's pretty clear that there's people that just want to hear other people talk about the thing that they like too, you know. Um, and I just, I yeah, I mean, my temperament, I don't really get a lot of joy out of the like let's let's take the the you know let's take this down let's let, let's let's let everybody know that i know but and that's no shots at josh i mean josh is awesome he's been on our show he's very funny um but i just it's a and and the comics he's talking about i i probably would <laughs> be having, having the same approach but for heathcliff in particular no i just um i i just enjoy it and I'm, i don't feel the need to change that approach 
you've had Peter Gallagher on your show as well twice, uh, including your, your 50th uh, episode. So I'm wondering if yeah. there's a plan to have him on every, every milestone. And, uh, and, you know, what's it like knowing that the creator of Heathcliff is tuning in every week? I, we'd love to have him on anytime. Basically, uh, he lets us know when he wants to come on. So we, and, and we're like, yeah, great. Perfect. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, I, I still don't really believe that he listens every week. <laughs> he says he does. And maybe that's changed since the last time we talked to him. But. I, I just don't even think about it. I just assume that he's not really. I assume that nobody is really listening to the, to the show. <laughs> I'm always shocked when somebody tells me something that happened on the show, partly because I don't remember it happening and partly because I can't believe they listened to that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think about it all the time. <laughs> Do you really? Yeah, when we're recording, I'm often I will think like, oh, Peter's going to hear this. You know, if it's some like, you know, we do sometimes critique the strips from like a point of view of like we're fans, I think like we make ourselves clear enough that we're fans that it's fine. But I do sometimes I'm like, oh Peter, I'm sorry, buddy. We're we we love we love the strip, but this is weird, man. <laughs> you know. But yeah, it's I'm I'm in the same place as Nick, where it's just like I can't believe he listens to it. When we found out, we just got an email to our our email inbox that was like. Uh, well, at first it was an anon it was just some person we didn't know that they were like they just wanted to say you're doing a great job and by the way, Peter's a fan and he you know and we were like okay sure <laughs> you know of course, <laughs> and then Peter himself wrote in a little bit later and even that I think we both were like up until he logged onto the Zoom call to record that first episode we thought it was somebody else we thought it was some joke we thought it was somebody pretending to be him but there there maybe the was, actor peter gallagher yeah. maybe i mean god willing i that's still my white whale of guests i would love to get the actor peter gallagher on the show one day maybe for like did we April say that, episode or something did we say that peter gallagher is the name of the the cartoonist that draws heathcliff do people know that anyway anyway if, if not that's that's who that is <laughs> The audience of this program is, uh, first off, they're, they're very intelligent, they're always very good looking, um, and they are the nicest people I've ever met. But they are comic fans, and uh, generally they know who these folks are, and Peter Gallagher was on uh, an episode earlier in the season, That's right, yeah. and he did tell me uh, that he listens to the, the meat cast. So either he's lying to all of us or he's just, you know, <laughs> sitting in his studio, hunched over the drawing table, listening to anything, and between, you know, NPR and uh, the guy who fixes small engines, the meat cast <laughs> pops on. I did see like maybe last week or two weeks ago, we, we sent out a tweet that we were going to be a day late with the episode. And I saw that Peter liked it. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> Oh, he's that engaged that he's like paying attention to the Twitter account. Like heard guys, you're going to be late. No worries. You know, I to be you. fair, he likes a lot of tweets. <laughs> well, yeah, sure. There's a big tw uh, Heathcliff on Heathcliff Twitter community of people like uh, remixing the comics and uh, and making podcasts. I think we're the only Heathcliff podcast, as far as I know. Yeah, I hope so. And still the best. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank God. Nobody get any bright ideas <laughs> and try to, <laughs> try to come into our market. So you talked about uh, social media and, of course, the website formerly known as Twitter. Uh, recently, you engaged your fans with your, uh, with your um, meat cast, March Meatness. So what did you learn doing this? This is a, sort of that, that Sweet 16 basketball tournament, but with the secondary characters of Heathcliff excluding the Nutmeg family. So what did you learn about the fans of your podcast from how this sort of built momentum from maybe something that was a few dozen people voting to over a thousand people voting? I, I guess... Uh... Their garbage ape and Jimmy was versus Jimmy was the big draw. That was the that was the the, the, the finals, and that was the one that got by far the most uh, response on Twitter. I think people just wanted to stake their claim. Those, I mean, those are the two biggest characters. We knew that they we ranked them the number one, the number two seed, and we knew that uh, people were going to be passionate one way or the other about that. I also think uh, we uh, we found out there was uh, some. Uh, there were certain people that had a loyalty to to the earlier characters, like people consider them garb the garbage ape to be the the original kind of weird Heathcliff character, and they wanted to make sure he moved on. And even some people wanted to vote for Pops Heathcliff, Pop Heathcliff's dad, who uh, goes to human who who resides in like a jail in a human jail, 
and comes out to visit every, time, every now and then. People uh, really pushed him forward way past where I expected him to go out. Uh, yeah, we had him yeah. as a pretty low seed, like 13th or something like that, if I remember right. Yeah, I think what we uh, learned is 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 it's a passionate, engaged group of people. <laughs> <laughs> People really have their characters they root for. I, I was, you know, if I could have rigged it for Summer Mummy, I would have done it, but it's never going to happen. Well, let's, let's talk Summer Mummy for just one minute. This is another <laughs> one of those characters that Peter just throws into the mix randomly, as if we're all supposed to know, you know, hey, it's Heathcliff and the Summer Mummy. It, of course, it's, it's July. The Summer Mummy should be here. When you uh, are casting a movie uh, for Heathcliff, First off, if I, if I never hear the song again, I will be super happy. And I love the fact that constantly everyone thinks that you're doing it live and talks to you while you talked on the original recordings. Yes. Let's play the movie casting theme song. You gotta cast a movie. I wanna cast somebody for Heathcliff. Maybe we can make a deal. Maybe together we can cast Ben Affleck. Again, is this about fan engagement or is this just, you know, we got 30 minutes, 90 minutes to fill uh, for this movie, so uh, you know, or this podcast, so let's just talk about the movie. It's mostly that. <laughs> it's mostly that second thing, which is funny considering the early conversations we had were like, this only needs to be 30 minutes. But now if we only are at 30 minutes, we're kind of like, well, we probably need to try something else. We need, people expect an hour now, you know. <laughs> but we also, I at least for me, like, I, I we love coming up with segments. Like, we really like, really stupid ideas for for segments and an opportunity for a jingle or something so yeah the movie casting i think kind of came out of that a little bit yeah i think i feel like an obligation to have a segment at the end of the show every week um not, and i don't know that anybody really cares about that <laughs> but it, I, I i feel like i didn't put in the work if i if, if we don't come up with one um so but the the movie one is just where we cast we cast real life actors like who they would what Heathcliff characters they would play in a potential live action Heathcliff movie it's just such an easy uh segment to do because all we have to do is like name a character and then name an actor so that kind of became our default segment for a few months while Kyle and I were too lazy to come up with anything that particular week we we're creatively blocked we weren't lazy we were we were just in a in a rut I know that you use the podcast to get to know your guests, and that seems to be the current. We like to, yeah. The, the we like to, we like to do gimmick. That, yeah. For a while, uh, I think Nick, you were doing something where you would say it looks to be about this many pugs, and then uh, <laughs> Kyle, you'd say it's exactly that many pugs. Um, so you have your your bits. So how do you sort of use your background in in improv comedy to help you during you know essentially what is a, a 30, 90 minute uh, improv uh, podcast? Well, I think. You know, uh, because of our, you know, training and background, I mean, I don't know how long Nick's been doing it. I've been doing it for like coming up on 12 years now. And um, doing I think improv, just, you mean, yeah. doing improv. Yeah. Um, and I think we just naturally kind of like pulling on threads. We we like to see and, and, it, and that's not necessarily every I, Nick and I do improv together a fair amount. And what I love about playing with Nick is. He gets this like glint in his eye when you can see that you did something that maybe you didn't even realize you did or you said a word in a certain way that you didn't realize you did and nick will just attack it like a piranha and it's so fun because you feel so supported and you feel so like uh this guy gets it you know he understands and it, sometimes people do that and you're like just let it go i said a word a weird way like why are you doing this but uh nick finds a way to turn it into something funny and the podcast feels like that to me is it's it's a lot of fun because i know you know like the thing with we like to use the uh uh comic strip to get to know our guests even just that phrasing of we like to do it we've now latched on to that as like that's so funny to both of us <laughs> that we would phrase it that way and it may not be funny to anyone else but that spirit of yeah, this this dumb thing that we said is now going to be we're going to we're going to spend a little time talking about this is, I think, what what drives us or drives me. Yeah, I agree. Those particular things, I I, and I, I don't know. I feel like whenever I do that, I'm whenever we, we'd say that phrase, 
we like to use the pod, the comic strips together. And we, I just feel like I'm doing a uh, David Letterman impression, you know, and a lot of yeah. the show, I feel like I'm doing an impression of a comic that I actually, that I, that I, <laughs> that I find funny, like uh, David Letterman or Scott Ackerman or somebody. I was going to say, you know, it's, it's funny because, uh, again, on the podcast, you get a sense of personalities and, and characters that you're playing. And, and Nick, I always get the sense that you're kind of leaning into almost a Norm MacDonald, that, that sort of wide-eyed, I'm playing it really straight, but underneath there's that uh, I'm smarter than the rest of the room and you're going to catch on eventually. <laughs> oh, no. And, but in a good way, I mean, honestly, there's no other comedian who could tell a really terrible joke and make it funny the way Norm MacDonald could. Um, and it was that sort of, you know, yeah, I'm just going to tell you this. Ah. And, and Kyle, you sort of have this, this every man uh, combination straight guy. And also, you know, occasionally you're going to lean into being the, the character yourself. And again, I, I'm just going back to the, the rapport that you have and, and the fact that you have this background in comedy. So is it any different when you are doing improv focused around Heathcliff and when you're doing improv? I mean, obviously the situations will be different. I've, I've watched enough Whose Line Is It Anyway? But, um, <laughs> you know... Is it different when you have an audience there as opposed to trying to entertain yourselves? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, when you're doing it on stage, yeah, I mean, at least ideally for me, you're you're listening to the feedback live in real time, right? Like you're you're understanding what people are responding to, and you're able to kind of adjust to that. Um, and with the show, it's like it's kind of just me and Nick and the guest, and um, you know, a lot of times the guest we don't really know as well as Nick and I know each other. So we're kind of relying on um, even just like seeing each other on the Zoom without even saying anything, going like, oh, I can tell by the way Nick's face changed just then that this is something we need to talk more about or or just give it aside for. Yeah, I mean, I would say, though, that when I'm doing improv, I'm definitely mainly trying to make myself laugh and and the other person on stage. So it's it's similar in that way. And part of that is because when I do improv, there aren't a lot of people in the audience either. <laughs> yeah, that's so why I said ideally. <laughs> you know, in a, in a, in the ideal world, we'd have a packed house that you're you're following the waves of laughter. But yeah, usually it is just either you and your scene partner or the team that opened for you uh, watching it that you're you're trying to make laugh to. I guess it's kind of like, uh, you know, playing in a band. Everyone wants to be the rock star, but you're just playing to your girlfriends, um, as I learned many, <laughs> many, many years. Um, oh, God, I wish we had girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go back to to those drops that you're doing. So, Nick, when you are coming up with the the uh, the Silent Night, Meaty Night uh, parody, is this something that you're planning out, or are you just kind of just hoping it works in the moment and just letting it flow? Oh, I definitely wrote it. <laughs> That's what, I didn't come up with the lyrics as, as a, I mean, I, I wrote it probably in like 10 minutes, but yeah, I wrote a parody of uh, Silent Night, was that what it was, with Heathcliff specifics. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think I, I probably sang it to you live, right, Kyle? Like uh, with yeah. a, a live over Zoom. Yeah, it was very um, comfortable. It was a very yeah. normal thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I made, yeah, I made you silently watch me <laughs> sing a uh, silent night parody. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I get really excited for Christmas for whatever. And that <laughs> translates into me writing Christmas parodies about uh, Christmas song parodies about Heathcliff once a year, I guess. Um, Kyle sang one. Kyle, you probably, if you heard that episode, I think Kyle sang a Christmas song too, and you probably heard Kyle has an incredible voice. Like Kyle, I can did. Sing. I, you know, I didn't want to bring it up. I, you know, just a little bit uh, shocked that you would mention Nick's uh, parody <laughs> and not mine. But um, yeah, I did. I did a little one myself. We had a little, uh, and our guest Molly, if I remember right, was was brought in a, something as well. Um, so yeah, I think we both enjoy the song parodies. <laughs> Well, Kyle, I was going to mention you. Thank you for making me feel like a horse's patoot. I was going to mention you uh, because, you know, it's tough because you do have a, a voice for the stage. Um, so is it tough for you to, again, to play into comedy when you are, you know, singing what we would consider to be the uh, the straight style? I get, yeah, I suppose so. I think, like, when I do something like a song parody or, or whatever, and I've done, like, musical improv, too, like, when I do things like that, my goal comedically is to like do that the way it should be done because I want the focus to be on the words or 
if it's a musical improv thing, I want it to be on like the scene and the characters or whatever um, moment that the character's going through. And so it's it's more like, yeah, the the people shouldn't be laughing at like the 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 quality of the singing. You know what I mean? Like, uh, um, for me, that's that's what works for me. Hopefully, <laughs> ideally. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, they are telling me that we have run out of time. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to talk with me today. The half hour has just flown by. Oh, thank you yeah, so much. This is great. This, this is great. had a blast. I want to thank everyone at home for watching Comic Culture. We will see you again soon. Comic Culture is a production of the Department of Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Pembroke.